Hey, SGT couples. Well, it has been a long time since we've been together. It's taken me a little while to connect with you. I was trying to figure out how to send bagels over the internet to everybody, but it's just not working. Pastor Ted here and um, speaking to all you couples. Um, this is really just an introduction. Uh, I've just been trying to find what would be a great thing uh, for us to share together. And so um, hopefully... Uh, these next few times that we get together, I can kind of hone in on some of the stuff that perhaps is happening in your home. Maybe it's happening in our home uh, as we're all together uh, trying to walk through this. It's an overwhelming thing. And um, even prayer together as a couple is maybe new for some of you, but it almost seems like, do we have a choice? We have to pray. We have to do something. So uh, this is what I'm thinking over these next few uh, days. I'll update them hopefully every other day at least. Uh, what I'd like to do is just focus on, you know, what happens when we've used up all our tools, when we've used up everything. You think about in your uh, house right now, you know, we uh, oh, we ran out of uh, toilet paper, my goodness. You know, we've run out of maybe a bacon or a tomato or a pasta, my goodness, pasta, or whatever it is, and you just realize, oh, my goodness, what do I do? Uh, do we run to the store? Is that a good idea? Do we call the neighbor and ask if we could borrow some? Or do we just say, well, let's come up with something else? And uh, we've done that a couple of times already, come up with something else. And uh, it's amazing how many replacements you can have if you really need to. So what does that have to do with marriage at all? Well, you know what? There are times in our marriage, yours, mine, where you just, you kind of run out. You are, uh, you've done everything, you've used everything, you've used the tools, and you come to a place where you're like, wow, here we are at a place we've never been before. Can I tell you, that's the best place to be in as a Christian and as a marriage couple, married couple, because at this point you realize, okay, the stuff that we're dealing with now has been hidden under all the nice things, all even the uh, disagreements, but now there's some things that maybe God has given you the opportunity to deal with. Maybe it is something that you've held for years, or maybe it's just coming into a new season. Maybe fear is confusion. I'm not sure what's next. Uh, we certainly can answer uh, that with an amen, because we don't really know. Um, here we are. This is a Tuesday, and uh, supposedly we are now, Long Island, going to become a new epicenter. What does that mean, right? And in the middle of all that, we're just trying to keep going and doing and, and not spend our life cleaning closets. It's interesting, isn't it? Um, how we could just jump in there, closets, basements, garages, whatever it may be. But almost like in our marriages sometimes, we uh, neglect the things. They pile up. We clean them. But when do we finally say, hey, enough. We need to just stop and take a good hard look at everything. To go back to 1 Corinthians 13, whatever is good and lovely and beautiful, uh, think on these things and not keeping record of wrongs. Do we go to back to Ephesians where we just remember to love your wives as Christ loved the church and wives uh, respect your husbands. Uh, you, we sometimes just kind of uh, rearrange those things, right? Sort of like what we've done. I did our basement and the first thing was to rearrange everything. Then Phyllis said, so what are we doing with all the junk? I said, well, oh, I don't know. I just rearranged it, organized it as I'm very good at doing. But the fact is there's still a bunch of junk down there that has to come out. You know what? We can rearrange things and sometimes we need to. But then at this point where we have to say, hey, we got to get rid of some stuff. Now, don't get rid of each other. You have each other forever. That's a covenant and that's a keeping covenant. But maybe we need to just stop and go, okay, hey, let's, uh, let's go back. Let's, uh, some, maybe you've said some things over these last few days, uh, weeks, where you just think, wow, I, I just said that? You, they usually start with sentences like, you always or you never. When you find yourself saying those things, we need to stop and say, what is it that causes me to say? Is it a hurt? Is it a disappointment? Is it a past action that I've just sort of buried, but now all the levels and layers and layers have come off over these last few weeks? And we need to start doing. Maybe there's some things that you've always done. You just kind of like, oh, whatever. And now whatever needs to be now, we need to take care of it. God is in the midst of all of this. I want to encourage you as you go through this to say, okay, God, it's time. So what I'm going to do is uh, each, uh, each time I speak with you, which hopefully will be often, I'll be able to just kind of tag into some of those things. Maybe it's the way we talk, the way we pray, some of those things. And perhaps by God's grace, um, the Holy Spirit could awaken us. And this could be the best time. We would look back on this and say the best time 
that we have had as in our marriage and on our relationship. So Phyllis and I uh, should join you along the way here somewhere. And just to encourage you, as we have encouraged one another, we have learned to pray in a different way than ever before. We've learned where our touch points are, and that's been a little challenging, needless to say. Uh, but boy, it's a, it's a new place, and let's take hold of it. Let it not destroy us. Don't go back to old habits. Uh, and, but let's go ahead to say, God, what do you have? Like I shared uh, in the devotion for yesterday, Monday, the beginning of Passion Week, the Holy Week, you know, it's not so much let's watch, uh, let's watch what Jesus is doing, let's watch with him. Let's watch and see what he sees in us, in our marriage, in our relationship, and let's see what God wants to do. So I look forward to, to sending more of these out to you, uh, both Phyllis and I, and we're excited about what God has done and will continue to do in our relationships. Well, the Lord bless you.